Well, hello everyone. Now, in the past, I've uploaded some videos of projects that were running from a variable frequency drive, and I said in the video that the variable frequency drive was being powered by direct current. Now, one question that seems to be coming back over and over again is, how do you run a variable frequency drive from direct current? And if you can run a variable frequency drive from direct current, how can I tell which one will and which one won't be able to do that? So today, I'm going to try to answer that question now. Before we go any further, what I want to say at this point is if you're watching and you're, if you have a variable frequency drive and you're wondering, the easiest way to tell is its age. So variable frequency drives from the 90s and older, they probably won't be able to do this. But if you have one from, like, say, the 2000s or newer, it probably will be able to do this. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, guys. So... This is a Magnacheck GPD variable frequency drive and as you can see the terminals on the bottom says input L1, 2, and 3 and then in the middle it says DC bus. It has positive and negative. Then to the right of that there's a brake resistor B1 and B2 and then of course the motor out output uh, UV and W. So this type of variable frequency drive is more than likely able to be powered directly from direct current. So, whatever source of direct current you have, provided it's the correct voltage, you should be able to tie directly into the DC bus through the positive and negative. Now notice there's a jumper between 1 and 2 and they both say positive. So that jumper, if you were to remove it, that's where a DC choke goes or an inductor. It's really just there to try to improve the power factor and reduce noise. Um, fed back into the grid from the variable frequency drive. So this type of drive and most modern motor controllers, the, both the control power and the power for the main inverter both come from the same source and that is the DC bus. So essentially all new variable frequency drives run from DC even though it accepts three phase input anyways. So. What happens inside is that three phase input just flows through a rectifier anyway and it just gets converted into DC no matter what so yeah this one will run directly from direct current so other older types that aren't you would see a couple different inputs you'd see that input on the left side that would be there but then there would be another input that would say control power input or control power something of that nature and those types actually do have separate um, power supplies and separate transformers for their control boards and control circuits. So, like I said, most newer variable frequency drives that are low voltage, so from zero up to a thousand volts, um, most of those are powered directly from the DC bus. So there's another small variable frequency drive, and I don't know if you can see that, but those uh, three terminals on the top there, the ones with the jumper, that's P1, positive and then to the right of that is the negative so again that jumper you pull out and put a choke there but otherwise it has to be in place so if you see that jumper there that's where you connect the positive and then to the right of that it's going to say negative so the other cool thing about it is if um, you connect two variable frequency drives together by the DC bus and you make them power two motors and then couple their shafts together you can actually make a pretty cool dynamometer and the other thing is, if you connect them together by the DC bus, connect two drives together by the DC bus, you can make them do something called load sharing. So if one drive is slowing a motor down, that regenerative braking will put energy back into the other. And so it makes it so that energy is not wasted and it doesn't cause an overvoltage on the bus, and then that means it, you don't need to have a brake resistor. Okay, this is a Danfoss. VLT 2800 and I think it's pretty obvious you can see where the terminals are for the DC but they're pushed way back in here so you need a special I guess not that special connector to get to them I mean I've gotten to them with just a standard push on connector but a little bit of a tight fit but so this should be pretty obvious um, what VFDs can be powered from DC and what can't be just by the terminals now I know some Toshiba drives had a PA, PO, and PB terminals, but it'll show you in the manual what those terminals are for, and those were actually the DC bus terminals. 
I think PB being the break, PA being positive, and PO being negative. Okay guys, just to prove a point, I'll show you this variable frequency drive running from direct current. So that's the battery there, and that in the white box is a boost converter, so that just boosts the DC voltage up. It doesn't change it into AC in any way. And variable frequency drive, the meter is hooked to the DC bus, and this is a three-phase fan we're going to run. Okay, so you see there the boost converter is reading 27 volts DC. Now the variable frequency drive is on, but the drive command is locked out on under voltage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the pulse width on the boost converter until we get the voltage up high enough to enable the drive command, and then I'll turn on the fan. Okay, the drive command enabled at 217 volts, looks like, so let's see if anything happens here. Alright, the fan's turning. Okay, so the boost converter is a little bit noisy, but it is working. Okay, just to show you guys I'm not cheating here, this is 208 volts AC, 50 or 60 hertz, three phase. And there's the connections there. UV and W in the ground. Also has some kind of alarm. I'm not sure if that's a tachometer or a thermostat or what. It's got a weird circuit board on it. But anyways. So it seems to run reasonably well at 215 volts DC. But in reality, for a 240 volt drive, you probably want a bus voltage of around 340 volts. For a 480 volt drive, you're probably going to want a bus voltage of double that. So keep that in mind. And just get a nice close up real quick. So you can see that's. Let's see, where am I? Here we are. That's the negative there. That's the bus positive there, and then UV and W out to the fan. Alright, one special bonus for you guys. This is an ABB ACS 670 KBA variable frequency drive. And I use this to power the motor in my van, so the batteries just connect right there where the positive and negative sign are. And it's just that simple. That's really all there is to it. So, guys, that's about it. So. Just real quickly again, if you are trying to operate a variable frequency drive from direct current, this is what you're looking for. You're looking for a newer VFD, you're looking for positive and negative terminals, or any terminals that say bus, DC bus, some say B positive, B negative. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention real quick before I forget. So sometimes, some variable frequency drives, the DC bus is actually connected directly to the bus capacitors. So you'll probably want to make some sort of pre-charged circuit otherwise you're probably going to weld your contactor shut and I'll have to show you how to do that somewhere over there so again most low voltage drives that are newer this works on so anywhere from zero up to a thousand volts most of them everything's powered from the bus as long as they're new enough so I hope that's answered your questions guys but if you have any more you know where I am you can comment me here on YouTube send me an email Thanks for watching.